Hi everyone, I hope you're good guys and welcome for a new video. So this one is a little bit special. So as the new year started, I wanted to take the time to really explain you um, why I use damage rack and why I like to use them and why I use them and how I use them in a daily basis. And I think it can really, really be good for you if I explain to you a little bit like the kind of mindset, the logic that I have when I create them and how I use them, you can, it can really help you to understand better uh, how they've been built and why I've done this. And it can really help you to understand better and quick, quickly the, the rack itself. So I'm not really gonna explain you like every function, every macro, uh, what it does, this kind of stuff is like, there is the manual for that, which is gonna explain to it better than me. And you probably have some video as well, but yeah, more about really what is in my mind when I'm creating them and what I want to achieve and how I achieve it. So in Ableton, you got the media racks that I usually don't use that much. You've got the instrument racks that I use and the audio effects rack. And you got as well the drum rack, which is another kind of different rack. But let's talk, let's start simple and start with the audio effect rack. And I basically started to do that because obviously when you start making music, and you use effect, you will see like there is kind of pattern which is repeat, repeating. Like you will often use saturation, uh, echo, I mean like delay and river, for example. And the thing is like, for example, if you use this combination for a track and you are like, oh, the last combination I used for the previous track, I would like to use it again in this new track. And audio effect track is great for that because once, once you have, oh, let me just actually ungroup. And when you have your combination of effect, you can just right click or control G group. And then you can click on this little save preset button and let's close it a, a to be at the top. And then you've got your preset here and it's straight away inside your user library. So just, you have to, yeah, you have to go to user library preset and here you will have like audio effect, instrument, media effect and audio effect, audio effects rack, and you find your rack here. So obviously if you have instrument rack, you go to instrument, instrument rack, and here you will see all your instrument rack. So obviously the danger of doing that is you will reuse always the same combination, but the way of the rack are really well made because you can see all the effects straight away and you can really quickly change one parameter from one effect to another and instantly change and very quickly in five seconds completely change the sound and the preset how it was. So that's super handy. And then you can as well, one thing that I like to do obviously is to assign some of the parameter to the macro. For example, the mainly dry wet. And like this, you can quickly control the amount of saturation, the amount of delay, and the amount of reverb. And then you can maybe, so after you can obviously rename saturation and you can put delay and reverb. And then if, you've, if you're scared that you will always use the same, you can, for example, uh, change, you can, for example, map the type of saturation to the macro four. Oh, no, actually I'm gonna map it to the macro five here so here you have saturation type and you can change maybe the time on macro six so here it's gonna be delay time and the decay for the macro seven and reverb time so this way if you put some color let's say up here is saturation here is delay and here is reverb. This way you have, okay, you can adjust the control of saturation, but you will be able to quickly change what kind of saturation, the delay, the delay time of your delay and the amount and the reverb time. So if you want short reverb, long reverb. So that's way, for example, you see, it's more or less the same uh, sound, but you can really shape it your own way to each different track. So that's why I really like using rock is because when you have this kind of pattern, which is repeating from one track to another, you can quickly save it and it's making saving you time uh, when you produce music. And usually that's how I create a rack. Usually most of the ID come like this. For example, 
when I'm walking, if I'm walking on industrial kind of sound, I know that I will often start uh, with a frequency shifter because this you can easily pitch uh, your sound in a different way than with a keyboard. But I know that I will like to use the ring as well. So what I will do, I will put this one in ring. And things I'm doing often as well is using Redux, you know, because you can down sample and you can get this kind of lofty, crushy kind of sound, which is really nice for industrial sound. I know that I will might be want to add some noise, so I will have this vocoder, which will add a little bit of noise with the dry wet. And something will happen as well. I will add some saturation, and which which is in hard curve mode because I know that this mode is a bit more uh, brutal than the other one, and so it will be perfect for industrial sound. And I will might be something you know aggressive as well. And pedal is great because I know that the first one, all of the type actually, but I know that this kind of effect will get me something aggressive. I could have used amp as well, why not? And then I will notice that I will always use like, for example, this kind of ping pong delay and the same kind of reverb, like kind of cavernous. And, and so this pattern of effect will repeat track after track. And so instead of all the time adding all the effect, you can just like, group them all. So you select them all with, sh with shift and then control G and then you group them. And so then come the interesting point to use macro to quickly have access because here you see like, especially when you have a long chain, it's quite of, if you want to adjust just the dry rate of the reverb, you have to go all the way around rather than if you apply the dry rate of the macro eight of the reverb on the macro eight and the delay on the macro seven you can control your reverb here and you delay here straight away. You don't need to go inside the rack and they are straight away accessible. And so same after I will apply the pitch so I can control the pitch straight away from here. Uh, the ring modulation, same. So for example, for this kind of effect where you see like, if I leave like this, the effect will be uh, on and that's not good because all the time you will have the effect apply uh, on the sound, even if you don't use it. So a good way is to apply, to assign uh, this button on off, this toggle button on off as well to uh, the same macro. And then when you go to map, you put this on minimum one and maximum, you actually you can leave one to seven or you can put zero this way. When it's at, at the starting, it's off. And as far as you just turn a little bit, it's activating. And I will do the same for the down sample and macro three, same for the vocoder in macro four, and then you can add some saturation. Uh, and then you end up having uh, this rack that I've done here, which is more or less the same that I was just done with the two frequency shifter, the redux, the vocoder, the saturator with the arc of mode, the pedal with the fuzz, and the ping pong delay and the reverb. And obviously, when I do rack like this, you don't need to use all the time all the macro. You know, you, you can find sometimes you don't need to use the pitch or you don't need to add noise or even you don't need to add delay. Or, you know, it's just you can even just use sometimes one macro or even two if you don't care. You know, as far as, it, as far as you have what was on your mind, you managed to recreate it. That's the main things. So, yeah, do not hesitate as well to modify, make it your own maybe change you know you can go inside change the saturator mode you can change the pedal mode maybe you can instead of having ping pong you can have stereo and change the time the reverb maybe you can try something else i don't know change the size to get different kind of tone or change the pre-delay you don't need to always use like them you can really like uh open them, modify them. And if you find something like this, you can even save. And for example, when you rename, you put zero two, and this way you will still have the original and the, the number two that you modify and made it your own. All right. So yeah, that's usually how I uh, like to create racks. Sometimes I like to be a bit more, uh, creative uh, like for example with one of the last which is the delay let me just find it 
as for example this one so it which is great with audio effect track sorry it's like it's working this way you can so you can chain like i show you like effect after one after all but you can as well uh, have different kind of chain and so you see if you click here you have chain and that's great the main use is like usually people i mean it's not usually but it's like the most common you will have low and people will separate like to have a kind of separate bind and here is going to be high and then you can uh, process your effect the way you want for example if you just want to add a bit of reverb on the high of your sound and you don't want the low frequency of your sound to have reverb that way you can just like put the reverb on this high a chain and like this is just the high frequency who will get reverb and not the lower one so that's a basic example but like what i say for reverb you know one day i say okay let's try to have different kind of of delay and with different kind of pitch and that's what i create so always start always keep a dry i would recommend not always but I, I usually keep it dry and then after I duplicate and here I have I had a delay and a pitch which is gonna pitch the delay basically and you have different kind of delay and different kind of pitch that you can even control as well with the macro and that way I, you don't need to use all the delay in the same time you might just even use one it's fine but it's it's allow you to 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 be a bit more creative and to try things different things like don't be shy to sometimes I create track and they, if the idea was <laughs> was no good you know I try different kind of combination and it's okay it's not working that's fine you just delete and you start over again but yeah for this track in my mind was I wanted like a reverse delay so this module this max for live has a reverse function so I wanted to have that and I wanted my delay to be reverse and I said okay just to instead of keeping just one simple uh, uh, reverse delay I say okay maybe we can have different delay and uh, at a different pitch uh, because it's I think there is I think I don't remember which pedal is you can control the pitch of the delay but it's something common you know and you don't have that on the basic uh, delay of of live you you cannot like pitch per side and I say yeah it might be interesting and have like nice sonoro sound with that and so that's what I've done I say okay let's have three different kind of delay with three different kind of pitch assignable you can control obviously the pitch and modify with the rack see the same i always start, try to think the way like i will not open the rack and to have all the all the map all the macro here you see and so here basically i can control i have always the dry 100 percent and with this macro i control here the volume of the chain and i can add a delay uh, with the pitch I want and I can here add if I want to be reversed or no and I can control the filter of the delay here and yeah that's it for now and same goes for the emperor for the um, give me the, for the kick verb so the reason why I create this rack is because usually on the rumble uh, before it was I mean like for me it was either I have like something very subby and was missing a bit this cavernous effect or either was the opposite you know when I was doing a, a rumble kick I had a very much uh, cavernous effect but then I was losing in the low frequency and I didn't have this body and I say okay let's let's try to make a rack and so that's why I create three chains so the dry one one where I wanted to recreate this boomy low uh, kind of rumble and one where I wanted to have uh, a rumble a bit more in the cavernous effect in the high I didn't because usually what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to balance just make one chain and try to balance the low and the high but audio effect Rack is great for that because you can split and you can have independent control on your low and your high and yeah that's that's just giving you more flexibility but obviously the the pitfall with that is like to become things become too complicated and on the end like it's okay for this time but the next time if you don't open the rack in one month or two the next time you're gonna reopen the rack you're gonna be lost you're gonna see oh my god what this is doing what this is doing and that's why it's great to use macro is because here i don't even need to open the rack 
I know that when my kick is playing here, I will add like very low rumble, and here I will add more like a rumble in the high frequency. And that's it, end of the story. I don't need to go uh, down. Obviously, like I said, it's good from time to time to go a little bit deeper and to modify, make your own, like I said. But yeah, it's always finding the right balance between always using the rack ha as it is, or maybe modify it a little bit from time to time to don't avoid, obviously, to have the same sound again and again and again. And like I say, I'm doing rack, but I'm not always like using rack for each track on for each purpose. Like for example, the kick verb, I'm not gonna use it all the time, but when I need, I use it. And it goes the same with, I don't know, for the ads or for the bass, like to, to or like I said, this, this reverb rack that I've done here, it's another way I was thinking for example, this work, my the way I was thinking, and I was like, okay, it can be great to quickly switch from one preset to another of the reverb. And because I had this feeling like sometimes you got the impression you always use the same reverb and you get stuck. And so that can be great to, to have be able to quickly change one reverb to another. So that's why I create this audio effect work with uh, you have seven chains, so the dry one, and you have all the reverb one with 100%, so it's just wet here. And I have different kind of reverb. They are not activated because I map, like I just told you, the button to uh, each macro. So that way, when I activate, you see they activated when I start to put a little bit of gain. So this is the volume of the wet of this reverb too. It's going up, and I will add this reverb. And this, so this is is good as well. Like for example, to use one reverb, but you can add a combination of reverb as well. So. Yeah, that was kind of to overcome blocks that I created that. Like all the rack is mainly an idea and something like, or, or like sometimes it's even like a different idea that I have and I want to put together in one. For example, the industrial kick was like this. Uh, you, so here I use the drum rack, which is the other kind of rack than live, but I wanted to have like this percussive rhythm that you can get from the kick, which is, uh, very common in industrial techno, but I wanted to be able to have still my boom and my rumble without having to have to add like uh, another rack, you see, because after it's complicated and I wanted to have a rumble stereo as well to make like the rumble a bit more stereo to add the reverb on the top. And that's what that was different idea that I put all together in one rack. And just to make my life easier, basically like this, I just drop the kick and I quickly have my off off beat percussion uh, if I want to rumble I can quickly have it you know I don't need to all the time go take grab a preset grab a, a plugin modify the preset it's like so quick and that way when I have an idea and I need to put it down I put it down I'm not always using sometimes I will if I have time if I start with a kick and I want something original obviously I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use all the time the rack you know sometimes I will probably do exactly like the rack, but in the separate way, I will start with a kick and I will put simpler and I will maybe add delay or reverb, but usually kick, I always use my rack because it's like, it's like time saving. And, but yeah, what, what I'm saying is like, for example, for perk loop, I don't always use, even if I like it, uh, the per, this perk loop, uh, oh, that was the work in progress one. Even if I like it, I don't always use it sometimes. Or if I don't use it sometimes, what I would like to do is maybe just take the delay out and trying trying something different with maybe just taking the reverb out and getting rid of the rest. I think if kind of stuff I've done, uh, if I go there, if I go, yeah, here is like, for example, I don't know, actually I've done different. So that's, that's what I was sending you from one track to another, if you really like. So for this track there and Kunyu, I really like it, the perk. So what I've done is I just group everything. And like this, I know if I want something, a perk loop similar than what is in this track, I can go straight away, grab it and um, put it on my track. And then I can modify, I don't need to keep it as it is, but it's always a great starting point. You don't start from zero and it's always more encouraging to try to modify uh, and try to make the thing your own rather than starting from scratch. 
it's this really depends at what stage out you are on your track if you're at the beginning you have time but you know sometimes when you are making a track and you have the idea and you feel like okay i need to put this down because in 30 minutes or in a in couple of hours the, the idea the feeling is going to be gone and i really need to put this down rock are super handy for that you know and you can still come back after later and modify but yeah it's really good for that so yeah most of the time is always to make my life easier and not always to save time like i said but it's as well making your life easier you know like here i just drop the kick and and i tweak a few macro and and that's it yeah so like I, I i forgot often to say but don't hesitate to make your own for example this one where there is all this kind of different reverb you can make your own reverb you can put third uh third party plugin reverb make it your own so yeah, don't hesitate to make your own preset and your own rack. All right, so I think that's it for now. I think I explained you more or less the way I see things, the way I, I, I see the rack and how I can, uh, how I stack them, how I put effect together and why. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and see you soon. Bye-bye, guys.